Hey, part two, 3.2. I'm really washed out. You can't see my beautiful face. So it's probably better that it's washed out. Hey, um, so back for 3.2. So thank you to all those people. So now let's get to what I've been doing. So I just finished the Normandy game, which was um, fun. There were times I was pretty stressed out about it. Not stressed, but, you know, kind of like, ah. Uh, because it was... I kept having to go back to the rule book on it. Um, so, uh, a few of the thoughts I had on it. Um, I, uh, you know, I can't decide what the kind of attacks I should have been making. So, you know, I had some two-to-ones for the Germans that were really successful. And, and, and in that, they pushed the defenders back. And so that's kind of what you want to do. Um, maybe weren't great victories but but then I had a lot of a lot of times that didn't work out so I think you really want to build it up to three to four to five point one with artillery and planes for the allies and just artillery and warfare for the Germans but so there's a, there's a lot of learning there about the best uh, plays and maybe uh, building up some attacks kind of building up your reserve for artillery because US allies can use double artillery attacks plus a plane, plus naval, so they could really, but you just hate to wait. So it's a little, it's a little tough to figure out the, the order of things. I never did figure out reserve, how to best use that. I kind of kind of had some ideas, and I did it a couple times where it worked, but it's just it seems like it would take a long time to do the planning, and there doesn't seem much time for the planning, so I have to work on that. Uh, determined defense really kicked my butt on both sides a few times, but really the Germans against the Allies, because they could just roll that determined defense and they just would whittle down the allies and the Germans really should work at getting some of those higher level units for the allies down because that's an automatic victory condition for them to break down some of those bigger units that use cadres. Um, so anyway that was interesting so that was my fourth game in my operational uh, exploration so I noticed at the beginning of the year in January I played a victory tonight and loved it I mean I just see my video and I just got real excited about it um, so that was my first one a victory denied had a good time I will want I want to revisit that again I then tried no retreat did not enjoy that as much um, I'm not sure what it you know things it always depends on your time the time you're using it the the day you're using, you know, playing a game, and maybe it just didn't set, but I don't have any desire to go back to that for a while. But I hear such great things about it. So uh, and then I played Stal Stalingrad Pocket 2, and that was interesting. I need to go back and try it again. I did not get that thrill and excitement that I got from A Victory Denied, and maybe that's bad that I got that thrill and excitement from that first game, and maybe when I go back to Victory, I won't experience that again. But uh, I need to try that. Stalingrad pocket, a different scenario, and just try some new things because I enjoyed it and I want to try more. So um, some some it seemed a little tedious sometimes, maybe. And then of course I did Normandy 44, and I I will try the smaller scenarios again. I don't know if I need to do the campaign game anytime soon, which may mean never, just because of time and all the other games to play. So. Um, that's that. So my next one, my next operational one will be, um, I'm not sure yet. I need to check. I've got a bunch of games I bought for Geekway that I need to play. And I have Ardans 44 and the Caucasus campaign, which I'm a little nervous since it's another, the same designer and good design and everyone loves it. So I'm thinking maybe I just am dense, which is very likely. So, um, but I want to go back to that, and I really like the look of his France 40 game coming out, so Mark Simonich is the designer on that, Alt-GMT, and um, I've been following the France 40 thread, and I think it's getting close, so I'll, I'll probably look into that, um, just to have a complete collection, because people really speak so highly of it, so maybe I just, something didn't click with me, or something. Um, it was, again, it was just all the, I just need to make a new, a player aid, for like a chart, to help me remember what to do with different units when it happens, so... Uh, I'm kind of so here's the deal with um so I'll have to look at my operational game and see what I have because I know I have others besides them I have samurai um, which is not operational um, I have some more I need to look at what I have in my pile so that right in the meantime I'm gonna do some go back to some tactical but before I do that let me show you something here um, that I saw that it was just really cool to me now 
thing is, to some of you guys, it'll be like, yeah, that's pretty obvious there, Todd, my itinerant. But, and I'll put a link into this in the show notes. But this case blue issuing orders, Joey Sabin does this really cool job. I need to find now that I'm on my computer. I need to find his channel and actually link to that as well. This is on Board Game Geek. Um, he did this great video on just issuing orders, and you could apply this to any game: miniatures, tactical, operational. This is the OCS, Operational Combat Series by MMP. But he just really talks about kind of issuing orders, and I don't think you have to do this in OCS and TCS you do, but I don't think in OCS you do, but he's just talking about how it's a good idea to kind of even maybe write them out, in my opinion. I'd have to do that, because it's such a big game like this, I'd forget, like, what am I doing with this unit? But he talks about, you know, planning, like, and saying, and I, again, I'd have to write this down, so, okay, this unit here, their goal is to get the city. So, how are they going to do that? Well, this unit, this unit, this unit, I got to break through the line, these units are going to have to screen them on this side, these on this side, you know, and you do it for, you know, and if you're playing both sides, you have to do it for both sides. You know, these units here are to break through and harass these units to keep them from getting this city. That's the particular objective here. And it was just a really cool way of, if you watch my Normandy game, I just go, like he says, willy-nilly. I just play, I try to come up with some plans, but they don't last but maybe one or two turns. Here you have to really plan ahead in many turns, especially this game, because you've got, you've got um, supply you need to think about. But he just explains it well, so watch it. I'll put a link to it. I told him to please do more because it was really good. Now, some of you may see it, like I said, and go, yeah, whatever, bro. That's what I do all the time. And he's a Battle for Normandy fan, which I think looks cool, but I don't need to play that because I don't have the room. Um, let's talk about what I'm going to do next for board gaming. I'm still trying to paint up some of my minis for the Russians and Germans, 15 mil. And I'd like to get another 6 mil game in. I'm going to try to turn my camera here. So, uh, before I do that, I'm, I'm trying to play. So, Panzer Blitz 2, um, Hill of Death came out. I hated it. I couldn't figure it out. A lot of people complained. And then they, they kind of revised the rule book a little bit, and I think it really suffered because of that first rollout. I don't even remember the problems. I just, I've never really felt like a game like that, and I really wanted to like it. But I put it away, sold it, traded it, whatever. And then I bought it again after seeing the revised rules, and I enjoyed my playthrough. Um, so the guy that's doing it lives near here, and he's doing an Eastern Front, and I said, and he's got the playtest version out on Consim World, CS, so consimworld.com or whatever, I can put a link to it as well, and you can playtest it, the rules are available online, everything's, you can play the whole thing online, so I mean, obviously you know, we want everyone to buy it, but not we, I don't, I don't have any stake in the outcome, but... Uh, Anyway, so I'm going to play test it on Basil because that's how he's doing it. I really told him I'm probably better for proofing, but I can still see if there's some strangeness in the scenario. So this is scenario one, take me to the river. So I'm going to do that. I'm also going to... This is a game I picked up for uh, Geekway. So this is um, advanced Tobruk system because I'm a tactical addict. And I want to try it out. It's got real basic rules here. It's an 11 by 17 map. I don't know if this will zoom in or not. I like the counters, they're huge. But um, it's just a simple scenario. One thing about ATS is advanced Tobruk system is I, I had some guys tell me who play OCS locally here that they love it. And I was like, okay, you know, I'll give it a shot too. And, and they like it better than they see ASL for whatever reason. But um, so he's. It's a tough company to work with. He's a, just a single guy operation, but uh, like this particular, it's called a tank, tanker's guide or something like that. It's a real basic game, the basic rules, four pages. The rules are huge, not big like ASL, but you know, 40, 50 pages normally. And But they don't include all the markers, and so some of the games, it's hard to know what games come with what markers, and it's like, I don't, I don't understand some of the thinking there, but whatever. This was fairly cheap. I found it at a used store, so... In WS. Anyway, so I'm going to do that as well. So I'm going to learn that and play that. So, so for board gaming, that's what I'm going to do. I need to get away from the operational side a little bit and do those. Man, I still have stuff I want to talk about. Um, so back to the tactical. And I guess I want to talk about, real quick, my budget. How do I do that? How do I do gaming? Because I don't have much of a budget for this. So for any of my gaming, miniature or board. So I do about 40 bucks a month I set aside, which is 
I don't know, I don't know what everyone does, but I do about 40 bucks a month, and then I just, I put a ban on spending in June, and probably July, maybe, man, there might be one, well, first of all, I've got a ton of miniatures to paint, so I don't need to get anything else for that, and I've got a lot of these board games to play, so I really don't need to get anything, and I've got all these scenarios to play as well, there's a lot of stuff on my radar, um, so I have to kind of decide, you know, think through about what it is I'd like to get next, because I, like I said, my budget's limited, um, I put a list here somewhere, and now am I going to be able to find it? There's stuff that I'd like to get. Pardon me while I... So, you know, there are some more minis to get the 15 mils up to play some scenarios. Um, there's, uh, you know, Stalin's Triumph. Probably won't do that one with Lock and Load. Mare Nostrum, which is the squad level Lock and Load game. I still need to play the Blitzkrieg one. I keep going back and forth on that never snows. These are all about 50 bucks, right? So that's about a month's worth, a little bit, month and a half worth, plus shipping. And um, it never snows, but I keep getting all these mixed things, and I'm kind of like, Ugh, I'm kind of waffling on that one now. You know, Rally Point 6 to complete my ASL collection. I have no idea what that just says there. Um, so there's just some of those games, you know, there's Impetus, the book costs about 40 bucks. To get two samurai armies would be about 50, 60 bucks. Um, and then there, of course, would be some paint. And what is that? Oh, there's the the Ronin series books. I'd like to show that. Actually, I probably don't have time to show that. I might be. Yeah. Uh, Ronin by Osprey is coming out in late July, August. That looks kind of cool, but... I I'm not sure skirmish is really my thing. After playing the bolt action game, I'm like, eh, I don't know if that's really my thing. But, I mean, this is skirmish. Ronin is skirmish down like five to eight, nine guys, whereas I know bolt action is a you know, platoon or something. So, anyway, that's kind of what I have to think about when it's talking about spending money on stuff. And not only money, but time. So, I'm at 12 minutes here. I think that's it. And my purpose for these is just to ramble, let you paint while you're doing it, or clip counters, or whatever. And by the way, everyone just keep putting out those videos. Uh, you know, Kev, hip shot. I should probably do some shout outs there if I could do it quick enough. Uh, let's see if I can. Let's go to YouTube. Hip shot's doing great stuff with the big board. He's bringing in new people um, all the time, and that's pretty awesome. So keep keep checking out his stuff. He's got. Um, uh, I'm forgetting. Something I'm forgetting here. So just a minute. Let me go to my channel. And you know, he's just got good stuff. So go check his out, his website, um, all that. Oh, great, there's all my stuff. It's kind of selfish. Anyway, whatever. So go check out his channel. That's one I want to shout out now. Big, the Big Board, Hip Shot, um, all that. Of course, there's Lord Legion. He's always doing good stuff here. Uh, now you can see on my thing what flavor pie, pie flavor. There he is, Hip Shot, The Big Board. All right, I'm uh, pushing up against it. So he's at meshtime.com, not the big board. So, you know, he does all kinds of cool stuff. I'd like to meet him in person someday. But Kev's like, oh, great. Don't worry, I'm not a stalker. Not that bad. Now, anyway, hey, so um, that's that. Go check him. Go check out some of the other guys I've listed on my sheet, and I'll put some links on the notes below. So, one. See y'all later. Bye.